We were talking about how uh, a doctor would know whether your heart is able to do as much work as it needs to do. How, how well is your heart working? And what dictates that the results of that test is not what your ECG looks like or what it looks like on an x-ray. It's how much blood can your heart pump in a minute? But that's really why you have a heart. So if your heart can do that, that's what you need it to do, right? So uh, we said that this allows us to have this whole profession that is um, echocardiography or being an ultrasound technician. Uh, you've got, I've got a link here that you can copy off of the PowerPoint slides that are in another part of the Canvas page, or you can just go to Wikipedia and do echocardiography. But this is what they'd be looking at. I don't expect you to be able to read these. I can't really read these. But here's what echocardiography can do. It cannot tell you how much blood is leaving the heart. Not, not really. It can tell you how much blood is in a ventricle right at the end of the period of diastole. So right before the ventricle's about to contract, how much blood is in there? And then it can tell you how much blood is in there at the end of systole. So it's at the end of systole, your ventricles just finished contracting. Okay, how much blood is in there? And from those two things, and one more thing, your heart rate, we can dictate how much blood your heart is pumping per minute. So let's talk about that. So let's imagine that I'm losing it and I'm deciding to splash some water on you, right? So you are going to need to know how much water I splash on you uh, because you wanna file a report about me. But all you can see is the exact amount of water that is in the bottle that I used. You can see the exact of amount of water that's in the bottle that I use right before I splash you and the exact amount of water that's in the bottle after I splash you, okay? So at the beginning, step one, the bottle starts out with 160 mLs of water. And step two, after I splash you, the water has 70 mLs of water. How much water did I splash you with? Do yourselves a favor, pause the video right now, right now, and go ahead and do this calculation, okay? I'm going to assume that you have done it and are ready for the answer. Uh, it started out with 160 mLs. It ended up with 70 mLs. That means 90 mLs got splashed on you, right? Yeah, that's as difficult as it is. What is step one? The amount of water that was in the bottle right before I splashed you, the proper term for that is the end diastolic volume. I know it's a long term. I had trouble with it too, but actually it's very descriptive. It's the volume of blood that is in a ventricle right at the end of diastole. And the end of diastole is how is the end of its relaxation period. So right before it's about to start squirting, that is the end diastolic volume. The amount of water that's left, sorry, the amount of blood that's left in your ventricle at the end of systole is called the end systolic volume. It's at the end of systole. It's after the ventricle has contract, the end of systole, how much was left behind? And the amount that you got splashed with, but in this case, a very different idea, is known as the stroke volume. That's the amount of blood that got ejected from one ventricle in one heartbeat, all right? Kind of simple, really. Uh, actually, let's go backwards. And I should add, I should add one more thing, that there is a formula for stroke volume. Stroke volume is the end diastolic volume minus the end systolic volume. Eh, let me just go ahead and write that down, okay? The stroke volume is equal to the end diastolic volume. Remember the end diastolic volume was how much blood was in the, oh, this is not good. How much blood was in the ventricle when we started 
and we're going to subtract how much was left over at the end after I splashed you, that's an S, that is going to be the formula for stroke volume. Started out good, went kind of crazy. All right, but in this situation, I'm not just gonna splash you once, I'm just gonna keep splashing you. So what do you need to know? I'm going to splash you 10 times in a minute. So how much um, water did I splash you with? Again, you can go ahead and pause this, but you can also look here. If I splashed you with 90 milliliters each splash, but I did it 10 times in a minute, I have splashed you with 900 milliliters in one minute. So that is the concept of cardiac output. Cardiac output. Cardiac output is the volume of blood that's going to be ejected from one ventricle in one minute. And yes, we can actually measure this by using ultrasound. We measure how much blood is in a ventricle right before it starts to contract. We measure the volume of blood that's left over when it's done contracting. That gives us our stroke volume. Stroke volume, that's the amount that got ejected in one heartbeat. And then we multiply that times your heart rate. How many times does your heart get a stroke volume in any particular minute? That is going to be your cardiac output. So the cardiac output is a heart rate multiplied times the stroke volume, and the stroke volume was the end diastolic volume minus the end systolic volume. Now for humans, that's about four to six liters per minute at rest. That is kind of interesting because that means that about your entire blood volume gets uh, pumped through each ventricle every minute while you're resting. Now, when you're exercising really, really hard, it is about 21 liters per minute. So if you're exercising super, super hard, then your entire blood volume, all the blood in your body will go through one of your ventricles about four times in a minute. If you were a world-class athlete, even more times than that. This is a related concept. This concept is about how the output from the two ventricles needs to stay the same. So when we were calculating stroke volume and end systolic volume and all that, I kept saying the amount of blood that goes through one ventricle or the amount of blood that leaves one ventricle. And you might've thought to yourself, why one ventricle? Why not the amount of blood that comes out of the heart? And that's because these concepts are medically relevant and from a medical point of view, we need to make sure that the amount of blood that is being pumped out uh, by the right ventricle is going to be exactly the same as the amount of blood that's pumped out by the left ventricle. In other words, if in any given minute, two cups of blood got moved into the lungs, then during that same minute, two cups of blood had to be moved out of the lungs and into the systemic circulation. Whatever the right ventricle does in a minute, the left ventricle has to do in that minute. If that doesn't happen, look what would happen. If I was moving two cups of blood into the lungs in a minute, but only moving one cup of blood out of the lungs in a minute, then I would end up with too much blood on the pulmonary circulation side. And this particular um, uh, bucket would overfill, right? There would be too much in it and it would overfill. And by the way, this particular bucket would go empty after a little while. These two things have to stay synchronized. How do they stay synchronized? Well, that is going to be our next concept. But if they do not stay synchronized, we will get the problem of unbalanced ventricular output. Unbalanced ventricular output. If I were sending more blood into the lungs than my left ventricle was sending into the rest of the body, I would get a backup of pressure into the lungs and a backup of pressure into the lungs would cause 
pressure to back up there and fluid would accumulate in my lungs. When fluid accumulates in my lungs, then it would leak into the little air sacs that um, are supposed to hold nothing but air and now there'd be water in there and I would start to drown from fluid inside my body. The word for that is pulmonary edema, pulmonary edema. If there is an unbalanced ventricular output and if the left side of my heart is failing, then I would end up with pulmonary edema. On the other hand, if the right side of my heart is failing, if the, right, the left side of my heart is being really good and putting two cups out here, but the right side of my heart is only taking one cup out of the systemic and putting it into the pulmonary, then I would get a backup of pressure, a backup of fluid into the systemic circulation, and that will cause the symptom where a patient's feet or legs start to swell up with fluid, and that would be a sign of unbalanced ventricular output that causes systemic edema, uh, and sometimes will cause a buildup of fluid into the abdomen called ascites, A-S-C-I-T-E-S. -E okay, we're gonna stop right there and pick this up on our next lecture.